Okay, um, we're going to continue our discussion of section 13.6 about motion along the curve. We're going to look at number 36 on page 915, which says to use theorem 13.6.3 to find A, um, the scalar tangent and the scalar normal at a given value of t. B to find the vector tangent and vector normal at that same given value of t. And part C to find the curvature at t. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to do this. Um, first of all, in theorem 13.6.3, um, what we see is a formula for a sub t and a sub n. And so let's start with, in part a, looking at that formula. The formula for a sub t is going to be v dot a um, divided by the normal v. Oh, and I forgot to give us our function here. So the function that we're given is the function r equals e to the t times i plus e to the negative 2t j plus tk and the value of t that we're looking at is t equals 0. So coming back down here, we need a dot product of v and a, which means we need v and a. So let's find v. v of t is the derivative of r of t, which is going to be e to the t i minus 2 e to the negative 2 t j plus 1 k. Now the acceleration vector a of t is the derivative of the velocity vector, so that gives us e to the t i plus 4 e to the negative 2 t j plus 0 k. Okay, now we're looking for a sub t, or in other words, the um, tangential scalar component of acceleration. Um, remember, by the way, that the vector acceleration a can be written as a sub t times the unit tangent vector plus a sub n, the tangential scalar, um, I'm sorry, the normal scalar component of acceleration times the unit normal. So that's what we're referring to when we say a sub t and a sub n. So um, in any case, we're, c we're concerned about this at t equals 0. So while I could find the dot product and get a general dot product for a general um, velocity and acceleration vector, there's really not a point in doing that. Well, we don't need that information. So let's go ahead and figure out the velocity vector at 0, which is going to be e to the 0 or 1i minus 2 e to the 0, so minus 2j plus 1k, and the acceleration vector at 0 is going to be 1i plus 4j plus 0k. So the dot product of these two going to be equal to 1 times 1 plus negative 2 times 4 plus 1 times 0. Remember, dot product is just the sum of the products of the components. And so that's going to give us negative 7. Okay, now the other thing we need is the norm of V. Okay, so moving up into this second column here, we're going to find the norm but I'm going to find the norm of v at 0. Again, I can find a general formula for the norm of v, but I really don't need it. 
So the norm of v that I'm talking about is the norm of the vector 1, negative 2, 1. So that's going to give me the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 1, or the square root of 6. So the tangential scalar component of acceleration is equal to negative 7 over the square root of 6. Okay, now we're going to find n of t, and again referring to theorem 13.6.3. Um, I'm sorry, rather a sub n, which is the normal scalar component of acceleration, is equal to the norm of v cross a divided by the norm of v. Now again, we are really only interested in this at t equals 0. So when I find this cross product, I don't have to find the general cross product of the two functions. I can just look at those particular vector values. So I'm looking for i, j, k, 1, negative 2, 1, the coefficients of v at 0, and 1, 4, 0. I'm looking for the determinant of this, and that'll be the, the cross product v cross a. Okay, well this is going to be, um, the coefficient of i is going to be 0 minus 4, so negative 4i. The coefficient of j, that's going to be 0 minus 1. We change the sign, so we have positive 1j. And then the coefficient of k, we're going to have 4 minus negative 2, so positive 6k. Alright, so the norm of v cross a is the norm of this vector, which is the square root of 16 plus 1 plus 36, which is the square root of 53. Alright, so that's our numerator. Our denominator we already found. That's the norm of v, which was the square root of 6. So a sub n at 0 is equal to the square root of 53 divided by the square root of 6. So that's part a, these two scalar, tangential, and normal components. Alright, now part b, they want the um, a vector components, so we want a t times t again at 1. Now remember t is the unit tangent, and the unit tangent at 0 is going to be v at 0 divided by the norm of v at 0. Okay, because the tangent vector is the derivative of the original function, but it's normalized, so it's a unit vector. So we know that v of 0 is the vector 1, negative 2, 1. We know that the norm of v at 0 is square root of 6. So we're going to get 1 over the square root of 6, negative 2 over the square root of 6, 1 over the square root of 6. But now that's t we want the product of a t into. So that product is going to be multiplying negative 7 over the square root of 6. We're going to have negative 7 over 6 i. We're going to have negative 14 over 6 or negative, or rather positive 14 over 6 or positive 7 over 3 j. And then negative 7 over the square root of 6. Again, we're going to get negative 7 6 k. Now, this next step is a little bit tricky because um, we're supposed to find a sub n, n. And your first instinct probably to find the normal um, vector here is going to be to try to find the derivative of t, which means not only would you have to evaluate not just t0, but t of t, but then you'd have to take its derivative which invariably is going to be really complicated. So instead, we're just going to remember this formula here, really that these are components of a, so if we want a sub n n, we only need to subtract the vector, the acceleration vector, minus 
the tangential um, component. So this is going to be, um, again, we're only concerned about at 0, so I'm just going to take the vector uh, 1, 4, 0, and subtract from it this vector here that we just found, negative 7, 6, 7 thirds, negative 7, 6. Oops, come back to me. There we go. Okay, and so the result is going to be 13 sixths i plus 19 sixths j plus 7 sixths k. So that's our a sub n n. So we're finished with part b. Okay, now part C asks us to find the curvature at zero, kappa of zero, but the curvature formula, referring back again to theorem 13.6.3, is the norm of V cross A divided by the norm of V cubed. So we have all that information. The norm of V cross A, remember we found back here, is the square root of 53. The norm of V, we found back here, was the square root of 6. And we are cubing that. So we have the square root of 53 divided by 6 root 6. And there's our curvature.